One day, as he was enjoying pastimes by the Jamuna's shore, Krishna, the son of Nanda, heard that Kaliya had again come to his lake. At once going there alone, and climbing a kadamba tree, he dove into the lake, making the water very turbulent. Playing in the water by wonderfully swimming back and forth and making many loud sounds, Krishna approached the demon, who at once wrapped his coils about the Lord. Playful Krishna then showed something. Not seeing Krishna, who had left their company, the Gopa friends became as if they had died. Tormented by the desire to find him, they saw his footprints and followed them to the lake. When they saw Krishna could not move, all his friends fainted. When they could not see him at all because he was covered by the water, they no longer wished to live. Standing by the shore, the cows, bulls, calves, and other domestic animals from the village, as well as the wild animals from the forest, all cried, fixing their eyes on Krishna's face and screaming in agony. Crying pitifully, the birds flew over the lake and dived into the waters. The trees and other plants became dry and withered. Many calamities happened. Sent by the Lord, an old man ran to Vraj village, crying and terribly calling out, Alas! Alas! He described what had happened. Seeing many fearful calamities, the people of Braj left their homes and hurried to find Krishna. The old man's broken words were like a thunderbolt falling on them. In his home, Balaram called out, It's a lie! A lie! Consoling the people of Braj, who had become like running corpses, he carefully convinced Mother Rohini to stay at home, and then he also ran with the others. Sanatana Goswami explains that Balaram knew how powerful his younger brother was. Balaram gave Mother Rohini the task of cooking Krishna's meal, and in this way he kept her at home. Balaram quickly came to the lake. Seeing his younger brother in that state, he could not remain peaceful, but cried in the agony of love. He lamented again and again, his cries breaking wood and stone. In a moment, he fainted, as Nanda and Yasoda had already done. Then everyone let out a great, painful, terrible cry that made the entire world cry also. Awakened by this great sound, Balaram, the crest jewel of the sober, with a great effort regained his peaceful composure. In a moment, Krishna's parents became conscious again, gazing at their son and crying loudly, they began to enter the lake. But Sri Balaram forcibly stopped them with his hands. Seeing everyone fainted as if they were dead, Balaram became filled with pain. In a voice choked with emotion, he loudly cried out to Krishna. Sri Balaram said, These people are not your associates in Baikunta. They are not your monkey associates. They are not the Yadavas. They are the people of Goloka. You are their only life and soul. They are dying now. Lord, I have no power to save them. They are now lifeless. O merciful Krishna, only friend of the people of Braj, give up this pastime, or your gentle heart will become filled with grief. Sri Sarupa continued, crying with many words of lamentation, fainting, their bodies filled with pain, and their hearts destroyed by grief, the gopis entered the lake as if to go by the Lord's side. Leaving that pastime, freeing himself from the bondage of Kaliya's coils, and climbing onto the serpent's thousands of raised hoods, Krishna stretched out his two lotus hands. 
bringing his beloved gopis, Krishna climbed the wonderful jeweled pastime place of Kaliya's hoods. With splendid singing and instrumental music, dancing with the gopis on these wonderful dancing places, Krishna, who is an ocean of playfulness, enjoyed the wonderful happiness of the rasa dance pastime. Sanatana Goswami explains that Nanda and the others could not see these pastimes. Staying on the shore, and now brought by Balaram to consciousness, Nanda and the others gazed at Krishna and became filled with joy and wonder. After subduing the serpent king, Kaliya, smiling Krishna forcibly took away the upper garments from the serpent's wives as they offered prayers. Making these garments into a single long rope, piercing the serpent's nose and threading it, playful Krishna held the rope in his left hand. Then Krishna, playing the flute with his right hand, rode the serpent as one rides a horse and made it go here and there. Sometimes prodding the serpent with his flute, he made the serpent his carrier, showing it great mercy. Sanatana Goswami explains that the Lord's mercy to Kaliya is described in Srimad Bhagavatam 10, 16, 34. Accepting priceless, jeweled ornaments, garments, garlands, and fragrant ointments the serpent's wives offered, Krishna placed them on Kaliya's hoods. With many lotuses, water lilies, and other flowers the serpent's wives brought from the Jamuna. Krishna decorated both himself and the gopis. As the serpent king offered prayers with its countless mouths, Krishna emerged from the lake, making his friends and relatives dance with joy. Then from Kaliya, who was very happy to have attained a great mercy that even Garuda could not attain, very wonderful Krishna descended with the gopis. Flooded with streams of tears from the happy eyes of Nanda and others, as again and again they embraced him and offered artik to him, Krishna, after mercifully giving some instructions, sent the serpent king out of the lake. Sanatana Goswami explains that the Lord's instructions to Kaliya are given in Srimad Bhagavatam. 10, 16, 60, and 61. O serpent, you may not remain here any longer. Go back to the ocean immediately, accompanied by your retinue of children, wives, other relatives, and friends. Let this river be enjoyed by the cows and humans. If a mortal being attentively remembers my command to you, to leave Vrindavan and go to the ocean, and narrates this account at sunrise and sunset, he will never be afraid of you. Pleased by a great and beautiful festival of singing, instrumental music, and other festivities celebrated by the happy gopas and gopis, the Lord went to his home. <laughs> 